Finally, let's talk about equilibrium. <clears throat> when you look at a reaction and you think about the energy associated with the reactants and the products of a reaction, you typically end up looking at a diagram as the one shown here. This is called a reaction coordinate diagram. And what you see is that on the y axis you have the energy associated with the reactants or the products. In this particular case, the products are at a lower energy than the reactants. And what that means is that you are dealing with products that are more stable than the reactants you start with. Um, in this particular diagram, we also see this hill up here, which if you look at the energy difference between the reactant and the top of the hill, this is known as the activation energy. But more importantly, within a discussion of equilibrium, the difference in energy between the products and the reactants tells you the overall stability between them and tells you whether the reaction will proceed forward on its own or not. Now, in the case where the products are lower in energy than the reactants, you actually will end up looking at a difference in energy, which will be negative. So the amount of heat liberated by this reaction uh, will be depicted by having a negative value for the uh, enthalpy or heat of the reaction itself and that's what we call thermodynamics it basically tells you whether the event can occur on its own what it does not address however is how long it would take for for the event to actually happen that's something depicted by kinetics which has to do with this activation energy barrier um, we're not going to look into kinetics in this particular discussion but i just want you to be aware that because something is likely to happen doesn't mean that it will happen in a time frame um you know that we consider short right this could actually take years maybe even decades or centuries to even happen but it will happen on its own you don't have to put in energy for this event to happen all right now the one connection i'll make in regards to kinetics and equilibrium is that Technically speaking, when you are at equilibrium, the rate at which the reaction, so if you look at your reactants here, A and B, the rate at which those reactants are reacting away to form products is equal to the rate by which the products are turning back into reactants. And in essence, a state of equilibrium is one in which, because these two rates are equal, you see no change whatsoever. To you, it will look like the reaction has stopped happening, but in reality, the reactants are still turning into products, but the products are also going back to reactants, and this rate becomes equal. So to you, it really looks like nothing's happening when in fact molecules are still reacting away. Now, um, when you take um, further chemistry courses, you'll find out the relationship of rate in terms of the concentrations of the species, which is represented by the brackets right here. And what you can kind of see is that the rate is technically equal to the negative of a constant we call this the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of the reactant raised to its coefficient multiplied by the concentration of the second reactant raised to its coefficient and that equals uh, the opposite reverse process negative k negative one times the concentration of c raised to c times the concentration of d raised to d and so what you can do is divide both sides by the concentration of a and concentration of b and divide both sides by negative k, negative one, to end up with the following expression, where you have products on top, reactants on the bottom, raised to their corresponding balancing coefficients. And the ratio here of the rate constants is what we ultimately call the equilibrium constant itself. And it is this expression that we're gonna be looking into in this particular chapter. All right, so let's uh, define a few things in regards to the equilibrium constant. All right, so the equilibrium constant has this expression, products raised to their balancing coefficients over reactants raised to their balancing coefficients. Kc stands for the equilibrium whereby you're looking at concentrations in molarity. So that's what the C stands for here, concentration for the values of C, D, A, and B. Uh, so all these concentrations will be in molarity values, by the way. They cannot be molality, mole fraction, you know, percent by mass none of those this has to be molarity specifically and the value of the equilibrium constant if you get a value that is less than one 
you will basically end up with something that has a lot more stuff on the denominator than the product, making the value less than 1, and that by itself means that the reaction is reactant favor. If the value is equal to 1, then that means that you have equal amounts, so to speak, of denominator and product. And if k is greater than 1, you actually have more products than you do have reactants. So that would be a product favor reaction. So just by looking at the value of the equilibrium constant, you can tell whether the products are going to be favor or the reactants are going to be favor. All right, now, when deriving the equilibrium constant expression, it is important to pay attention to the physical states, which in turn means that you have to keep your solubility table and trends handy. You have to remember whether um, elements in the elemental form are gases, liquids, or not. Um, and so when it comes down to the equilibrium constant, it really comes down to the idea of you being able to change the concentration you know, to a wide range. If you can easily change the concentration either by diluting the solution or by adding more amount of solute, then that means that you can definitely have the concentration as a variable in the equation. So things that are AQ, which you can definitely change the concentration via dilution or by adding more solutes to the solution, or even gases, you can definitely get gases dissolved in solution. Those things will definitely uh, give you a range for the concentration values. So gases and AQ substances will definitely be present in the equilibrium expression. However, Solids, insoluble solids like lead iodide, which we will predict via the solubility rules as being insoluble, um, at best they're going to have a small, a very small amount of lead and iodide present in solution, but it will be so small that basically remain a constant. It's not really going to be changing, and because of that, we don't actually treat solids in the equilibrium expression. That concentration is too small and doesn't really change. And also, if you do have multiple phases like liquids, um, that would imply that the liquid is not dissolved in water, it's present as a different phase. And because of that, you will have a very small amount of the second phase molecule in the water. And that will actually be reached to a maximum, meaning that that concentration won't be changing, it'll be a constant. So you don't actually use it for the expression. And since water itself is a liquid, we typically don't use it in the expression. All right, so only things that have the AQ symbol or the gas symbol are going to be added into the expression. And I'm going to show you a few examples next so that you see how this plays out. All right, so water. One more thing I'm going to show you in regards to water, and the reason why we're not going to include it is because of the same logic behind not including the solid or the liquids. The concentrations are not going to be changing much for water much the same way that the insoluble solid would not be changing its concentration and solution all that much. Um, and to show you that, I want to do the calculation for the concentration of water. So consider that you have one liter of water. We're going to use the idea that the density is one gram per ml for water, with another molar mass of water being 18.02 grams per mole. So if you start with a one liter of water, we can use dimensional analysis to convert to mls. We know that one liter equals a thousand mls. And we know that because of the density, every one ml of water you have is going to be equal to one gram of water. So technically one liter of water is equal to a thousand grams worth of water. Now here's where we use the molar mass of water. We have grams on top, so we place the grams at the bottom, that's where the 18.02 needs to go. That's equal to one mole of water. Alright, so if you do the calculation, you're going to find out that this ends up being 55.5 moles of water. And because 55.5 moles of water are present in one liter of water, technically speaking, the concentration of pure water is 55.5 molar. Now, this concentration is humongous. Even for substances that we consider highly concentrated, like concentrated sulfuric acid that, you know, can mess you up if you're not careful with it, even that substance doesn't go beyond 18 molar. So 18 molar is what we already consider being really high concentration. And so having a concentration of water of 55.5 molar is not only like way more, way higher than you know the, what we consider high, but not other solutes is going to be able to reach concentrations remotely in the vicinity of 50 molar. So by default, even if water is part of a reaction in terms of the balancing reaction, 
um, even then, the change in concentration of the water is going to be so insignificant that by all intents and purposes, it can be remained or it can be thought of remaining as 55.5 molar. So as a result of the fact that water is going to pretty much remain constant in concentration, we also ignore it, even though we have everything else present in it. All right, so let's do a few examples to see how this uh, works out. All right, so we have the following equation, 2BrCl gas making Br2 gas and Cl2 gas. Since everything are gases, everything is gases in this equation, everything will appear in the equilibrium expression. And what you want to do is have the products multiplying each other in terms of concentrations. That's what the brackets represent here. So you have Br2 times Cl2. And since the balancing coefficient of both of them is 1, each one of them is raised to the first power, which you don't need to write. But it is understood that each one of them is raised to the first power. On the other hand, the reactant, BrCl, there's two of them. The balancing coefficient is 2, so you have the concentration of BrCl raised to the second power. All right, now let's do another example. Now here we're reacting magnesium oxide solid with carbon monoxide gas, yielding magnesium solid and carbon dioxide gas. If you write the equilibrium expression for this equation, you have to be careful not to include the magnesium or magnesium oxide. And the reason being is that they are solids. You do not want to include solids or liquids in the equilibrium expression. So the only thing you will have on the product side that appears in the expression is the CO2 gas. And the only thing you will have in the reactant side uh, that appears in the equilibrium expression is the CO gas, right? So this is the only expression you should be writing. Mg solid and MgO solid should not be present. All right, here goes another one. HFAQ plus water gives you H3O plus plus F minus. This is basically your conjugate acid and base reaction. Specifically the dissolution of hydrofluoric acid in water. All right, so if you look carefully, you realize everything is AQ except for water. So water is the one thing you do not want to include in the expression. So you should have concentration of hydronium times concentration of fluoride divided by the concentration of HF. Notice that the water is being excluded because its concentration is assumed to be constant. And then finally, we have titanium solid reacting with two chlorine gas molecules to yield titanium 4 chloride liquid. In this case, nothing in the product side is AQ or gas. So that means that you have nothing in terms of molecules for the product portion of the equation. Now you can put a zero. If you write zero for your expression up here, then automatically the equilibrium constant becomes zero. And if you remember, the equilibrium constant has to be at best less than one, but you're not gonna have it be zero exactly or worse yet negative. So the, what that means is that even though you have nothing on the product side in your expression, you must put a one, right? So that implies that you will not be changing the concentration, but you're not automatically making the concentration, excuse me, the equilibrium constant equal to zero. So place a one for the product and on the reactant side, titanium solid doesn't make it into expression, Cl2 does, but you have a balancing coefficient of two, so you gotta raise this to the second power. All right, so in the next video, I'm gonna discuss how you do calculations with the equilibrium constant. So see you in the next video.